Let's now go to the life cycle. The life cycle of a multifamily project, four steps. And now I'm going to go through this very, very quickly. Pre-offer, post-offer, post-purchase, and sale. Those are your four steps. And you start off by doing metro research. You look at the jobs, you look at income levels, you look at the path of progress. Every city has a path of progress. For example, in the San Francisco Bay Area, East Palo Alto was not in the path of progress a while back, but now it is. So is Hayward. These are places that are now in the path of progress, but they weren't before. What are the pricing trends? Then you start creating your team. You go out there, you start talking to brokers, you start talking with inspectors. Property managers are so key contractors that can rehab your property. You start looking at opportunities within your target area. So you, you usually don't look citywide. You look at portions of a city that match your, your needs. You start doing your opportunity search. And then you start walking comparably sized properties for sale. You may not want to buy those properties, but you really want to understand what those properties are like. You walk in and if they're, they're immediately offering you a month off, you know it's a soft market. If they're even laughing at your suggestion about a $25 Amazon gift card, you know that it's a very tight market. So it's very important to walk the comps. Once you've found the right opportunity, you make the first offer and you make it based on the seller's financials. What that means is when you make the offer, you are simply assuming that the seller's financials, the numbers that he's given you in his offering memorandum are correct. Now, they rarely are correct, but at that point, you're perfectly okay with making that offer as long as you make it contingent on their, their financials being correct. So the next step is you do due diligence. And due diligence is very time consuming for multifamily compared to single family. And there are three phases. Due diligence part one is everything on the property, the roofs, the sewers, you know, uh, the unit condition. You must walk 100% of the units. If there's 235 units in a property, you will walk 235 units. Don't walk 230. They say we don't have keys for five minutes. Come back the next day. Normally, it's not that they don't have keys. It's probably because those units have mold or they have three Rottweilers or they have fire damage. So come back the next day. Walk it 100% of the time. Look at the carpets. Look at the hallways. Does the lighting need to be changed? Do the exteriors need to be fixed? What about the MEP, the mechanical electrical plumbing? Those are big ticket items and can cost you huge, huge amounts of money. So look at the due diligence and your property manager, your chosen property manager will help you with that. The second piece of due diligence is equally important. Now you're verifying the financials. They say net operating income for this property is $300,000. Well, what constitutes that? All of the expenses and all of the income. But now you need to verify all of the expenses, every single expense and all of the income. You need to then match it to the bank account. So what do they say in there? Don't just look at the property management software because you can put anything into a property management software. The software doesn't know that it's being lied to. That you then have to match this up by looking at the bank statements and reconciling them. You, you know, if, if they say we have $100,000 in income and you look at the bank and the bank only has $80,000, well, then they're cooking the books. So due diligence part two is important. Due diligence part three is now you're walking comps. Didn't you do that before? Yes, but these are immediate comps. Now you know where the property is. You're basically walking every apartment complex in a three, 400 yard radius. And once again, you're trying to determine what's happening with the property. One of the things that we like to do is you basically walk into one of those comps and say, hey, we're, we're also looking to buy, you know, we're, we're all looking to rent at Windsor. And they're like, oh no, don't rent at Windsor. That place is horrible. They've got all, they've got this problem. They've got that problem. They've got people that are violent. So you start to hear stories about the property that you're looking to buy by going and talking with people um, around you. And so walking comps is a very important part of the due diligence process. Then you negotiate the repair credit, right? So it's a class C property or a class B. There's always stuff broken. You always ask for a repair credit. You never get 100% of it, but you negotiate. You either get a price reduction um, on it or they give you some sort of credit that you can use towards closing. If the seller doesn't agree, then in most cases, everything you've done so far is wasted. You start restart at phase one. If he agrees, then you start promoting the opportunity to the investors through seminars and webinars and investor summary document and financial projection documents. And then lawyers create LLCs to, pr to protect the investors and protect the management team. Typical purchases are completed within 75 days. 
and now phase three starts. This is when you start making changes. The first thing you look at is the team. Do I want to retrain these people or do I want to replace? In our case, more than 50% of the time, it's replacement. Start making upgrades, amenities, interiors, exteriors, right? Repave the parking lot, make the clubhouse look a lot better, enhance tenant satisfaction, enhance curb appeal, get rid of undesirable tenants. The landlord could be living with tenants that don't pay on time 50% of the time. Start giving them notices, start pushing them out, raise their rents, they will go, and then start bringing in better tenants with higher rents because you're rehabbing the units and people can now actually afford more money. Um, can afford better better product. A repair budget, right? So you also negotiate a repair budget and you're not just looking to improve the curb appeal, you're looking to lower the expenses. So you could it could be done through toilets, it could be done through, um, through um, energy efficient lighting, through boilers. Everything is being done to raise the profitability. Send to your investors each quarter checks for available cash flow and and you know, a property report from the management team. That's what you're doing for three to five years. And then if you're doing your job right, the property's net income is increasing. There's also some market and rent appreciation. Typically by year five or, or before, you're reaching the exit projections that you gave your investors before they invested. At that point, you're gonna put the property up for sale and complete the sale within a six month time frame. Sometimes uh, as little as three months, but six months is fairly common. Investors then first get their principal back along with a share of the profits.